All right, so to export an image or a video in Touch Designer, all we need to do is to add a movie file out at the very end of our network. Once we've done that, we have the option to either export a video or an image. We can also export image sequences and stop frame movies, but I never used that. So let's go ahead and select image. And I'm gonna select PNG as my image file type. And you can see it automatically changes this expression here because of this me.files suffix. So I would highly recommend leaving this expression in here. You can also click on this plus to locate a folder where you want to save it and also write the name there. But I usually go with this expression and just write my name in here. So now my file is going to be named name.0. So this zero comes from this n here. And you can change this n manually. So you can give every, every export its own ID. You can also turn on unique suffix. So it's going to do this automatically. If I now want to record my image, I would highly recommend pausing my project so I can select the still. And then all I've got to do is just click on record on and off. And now my file is going to be saved. Usually the way I do it is I create a folder called export and write that in here. So export slash name of my file. And then I hit record on and off and it's going to be saved there. All right, to export a video, all we've got to do is change this to movie. And now we can select a movie codec that we want to use. I usually go with photo motion JPEG, which just exports an NMOV. And it's the same thing here as with the image file. Now I can also select a movie pixel format. I would usually go with the higher one. So you have a higher range of colors, the way I understand it. And to use audio from your project, what you've got to do is just select some kind of audio chop. In this case, I've just added a null here. And now I can use that in here and my audio is gonna be exported that is playing here. I can also select the codec and the bit rate. I always leave the quality at one. And the movie FPS, we can either just type in a manual one. I usually just go with whatever we have in our project. So that is 60 in this case. Now to record a video, it's important to, that you turn off real time so it gets exported smoothly. It actually gives me an error because I don't actually have this export folder yet. So if I just delete that and hit record again, you can see now it's being recorded. Well, you can't actually see that, but it's still being recorded. And then you can turn off record and it's going to be in your folder, wherever you have specified it. It might appear faster or slower depending on the load of your project, but the outcome is going to be the same as the real time preview here. You can define the length of your recording by changing the end and R end down here. So you can change the length of your timeline down here. So let's say one at 20 seconds, that would be 1200 frames. So we've got to change it on end and R end. And now you can see our timeline is longer than before. If you just want to play it once, you can change this range limit to once and then go back to frame zero, hit record. And then once you hit the end, it's going to actually stop. Now, if you turn off record, it's not actually going to be recorded. One thing you've got to do here is just click on loop again, and then it's actually going to be saved. All right. Thanks for watching.